As we have talked about CMOS inverters and transmission gates in one of our other videos, which only use two transistors, we want to turn to more complex CMOS circuits with many more transistors in this video. For this video, you should know some basics about Boolean logic, which you can find in the video description. Also, if you haven't seen our first video on CMOS circuits, we recommend watching that one first. As we have seen in the last video, CMOS logic circuits are always divided into a pull-up, consisting of PMOS, and a complementary pull-down network, consisting of NMOS transistors. The PMOS transistors are always located in the pull-up part of the circuit, since their bulk connection can be directly connected to the supply voltage here. Conversely, the NMOS transistors are always in the pull-down network, since their bulk connection must be connected to the ground potential. Since this is almost always the case, we can again use the simpler MOSFET symbols. In order to approach the analysis of CMOS logic circuits, we start with a simple NAND gate and its corresponding truth table. The easiest way to design a CMOS logic circuit is to derive the pull-down network from the truth table first and then develop the corresponding pull-up network from the pull-down network. Sounds confusing? I can assure you it's not. First, we need to get the Boolean equation for the pull-down network that pulls the output to the low state. Therefore, we must obviously search the truth table for all cases where the output is low. So for our case, that's only for the last line where A and B both have high level. The Boolean equation is therefore written like this, where the dash above the Y indicates that the output is low in this case. Inverting this equation would give us the minimized Boolean equation for the regular output of an NAND, by the way. We can see that the equation for the pull-down network shows an AND connection, or conjunction, which can be represented as a serial connection of switches. In our case, the output goes low if, and only if, both NMOS switches are closed. If one or more switches are open, the output level is not defined. In a second step, we can derive the pull-up network from this circuit. For this, we can simply transform the serial connection into a parallel one and we get our final circuit. Let's do a test to make sure that the pull-up network works correctly. If we apply a low level to either one or both of the two PMOS transistors, the output is pulled to high. Only if high levels are applied to both PMOS gates, the output is not defined by the pull-up network. But as we have seen before, in this case the pull-down network takes over. So all four possible states in the truth table are defined. Let's try a little more complex circuit. When we look at this truth table of an XOR, we see two states where the output is low. So we can say that the output is low exactly when either A and B are low or when A and B are high. Now let's look at the pull-down network for this circuit. As before, the conjunction A and B is a serial connection. An OR connection, on the other hand, is a parallel connection of NMOS transistors. As a result, we get a serial connection of two NMOS, which is connected in parallel to another serial connection of two NMOS. For the pull-up network, we apply the same procedure as in the previous example. Serial connections turn into parallel ones and vice versa. Take your time to prove the functionality of the pull-up network again. Are all states in the truth table defined correctly?
Now we know two of the most important logic circuits with two input variables. But what if we want to use three or four input variables? For this, we first need larger truth tables. Three input variables result in a total of 2 to the power of 3 possible output states. Four variables therefore result in 16 output states, which is 2 to the power of 4. From the tables, we now want to derive the Boolean equations again. So we look for all the lines for which our output becomes low and write the equations for y dash. As you can see, this gives us very long Boolean equations. If we would implement the CMOS circuit like this, we would need a huge number of MOSFETs. We should therefore simplify these equations using all the available rules of Boolean algebra to arrive at the minimized form. This process is tedious and lengthy, so we want to find an easier way to do this. For functions with three or four input variables, the so-called Kano map is very useful. This technique takes advantage of our pattern recognition capability to simplify a complex logic table. To do this, we must first transfer all the states of the table into a two-dimensional grid. So let's simplify the big table. Since the table has 16 rows, our Kano map also needs 16 fields. In our example, the left two columns represent the input variable A, the right two the inverted input variable A dash. Next, we select the upper two rows for the variable B and the lower ones again for B dash. We continue with the middle two columns representing the variable C, while the outer two represent C dash. And last but not least, we select the middle two rows for D and the upper and lower ones for D dash. Now each field of the grid represents a single combination of input variables, which is also the only requirement for the arrangement of the input variables. So the Cano map might also look like this, for example. In the next step, we enter all low states from the table into the map. Now we can already recognize the first patterns. We start to look for groups of two or four connected input variables, like this one or this one. The fields may overlap as here and may also extend beyond the edge as here. In cases where there are no connected fields of two or four, the variables remain alone. As you can see, there are many ways to simplify. In general, we look for larger fields. The reason for this will become clear in the next step. Once you have identified all fields and there are no single low states left, you can directly read the minimized Boolean equation. Thus, the min term A and B can be derived from the upper large field. For the overlapping field of two, we can write A and C and D. For the one that goes over the edge, B and C dash and D. And last but not least, for the single field, the term A dash and B dash and C dash and D dash. So we see that large fields lead to small terms, which ultimately leads to fewer MOSFETs in our CMOS circuit. This simplified form of the Boolean equation using the Kano map does not have to be the smallest possible form. Sometimes you can still simplify things, but in general it's a good approach. To get some practice, try to minimize this table with three variables using the Kano map method. Now that we have our minimized Boolean equation, it's time to draw the circuit. Since we have searched for all low states at the output and set up the equation for y dash, we start again with the pull-down network. 
Again, each end connection corresponds to a series connection of NMOS and each OR connection corresponds to a parallel connection. With the pull-down network completed, we again use our old familiar trick to generate the second half of the circuit, the pull-up network. Again, we turn our parallel connections into series connections and vice versa. So the pull-up network looks like this. With that, we are basically done. For the sake of completeness, we need two additional MOSFETs for an inverter for each variable that has to be inverted. In our case, all four variables and therefore four inverters or a total of eight additional MOSFETs. This concludes our first attempt at implementing simple CMOS logic circuits. The process shown here is simple and iterative to apply, but does not guarantee that the function cannot be built with even fewer MOSFETs by cleverly using transmission gates, for example. With the big task of saving chip area, many engineers over time have found more and more clever ways to build CMOS circuits with a minimal number of transistors. But for all practical purposes, the approach using Boolean logic and the Kano map, as it was shown in this video, will do. I'm Michael with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you've learned something today, but anyways, thanks for watching.